You know, I think one of the faults of the modern generation is we seem to prefer technology for the sake of technology. You know, sometimes new and improved is not necessarily the best route to take. And I can think of no better example than this. Folks, this is my miniature Mr. Coffee unit. It's been a part of uh, the family here for 10 years. It is one of the most reliable products I have ever owned. Over the course of uh, a decade, it has not once shorted out on me. Works perfectly. It is just as fine a product as it was the day I purchased it. You know what? It's great craftsmanship. This is really the type of uh, product I think all products should strive to be. Reliable, sleek, lightweight, very, very basic. You know what? You really can't go wrong with that. But you see, uh, coffee makers like uh, Mr. Coffee here, they're quickly becoming antiquated. They're things of the past. They're outmoded. They're outdated. They're archaic. And they're being replaced by something new. They're being replaced by... Well, I can't even pick it up with one hand. Hold on. Just leave Mr. Coffee for a while. They're being replaced by... Oh, oh this absolute monstrosity. Almost broke my table. This is called a care rag. A K-cup machine, as some of the kids call it. And uh, as you can see, there is a considerable difference in size. Uh, the Mr. Coffee, I believe, weighs about three pounds. Very lightweight, very dependable. Uh, brews about uh, two to three cups of coffee. The K-cup maker, on the other hand, uh, weighs roughly 500 pounds and it can hold, it looks like it can hold here about, uh, this is a rough estimate, I want to say the Pacific Ocean. So anyway, obviously this is uh, two different products catering to different graphics, right? See, the Mr. Coffee is for guys, you know, very quick, you want to get your coffee in the morning, you get up, you go, you flip it up, you put in a little coffee maker, you get your uh, little napkin up there, you put it in there, you get, break out the black silk, you go on, take a shower, come back, the entire pot's ready. But the K-Cup on the other hand, this is different. This is for today's modern coffee connoisseur. The kind of people who don't really like to drink a lot of coffee. Instead of this want one cup. And I can understand why that'd be convenient for some people. Uh, the problem is, I think uh, in the leap from one technology to the other, uh, we're seeing a uh, fairly considerable, I hate to use the term, but regression. I think Mr. Coffee is the absolute perfect format for making coffee. It's quick. It's simple. You can turn it on. It's ready in like three minutes. I think in every conceivable way you can look at it in terms of engineering, Mr. Coffee is a better product. Okay, the K-Cup maker. Lots of problems. Number one, Mr. Coffee obviously is a lighter weight product. It's very convenient. You can put it anywhere. I can put Mr. Coffee like on top of my head. It wouldn't hurt. You know, it's, it's very lightweight material. And I think the K-Cup maker Keurig machine, what makes it so unique is with technology going the way it is, everything is getting smaller, more compact. That's the idea is to kind of atomize everything to give them the sleekest and smallest possible form. But this thing is like the size of a Cadillac. I mean, it's huge. It's a fax machine. You can conceivably beat someone to death with this. If someone dropped this out of a window on your head, you would probably get killed like in a Looney Tunes cartoon. It's just an absolute monstrosity and complete opposite of everything we're learning about modern consumer goods. But it's popular. In fact, they don't even bother making real coffee machines like Mr. Coffee anymore. It's all K-Cup all the time. And uh, I don't know, there's lots of other structural problems with it. You see, Mr. Coffee, I think one of its advantages is it's very fast. You put in your filter, you put in your coffee, you pour in the water, you hit the button and bam, you know, in like what, four minutes, the thing's done? Well, even that quick, like three minutes, it's done. Okay, with the K-Cup machine though, however, you gotta wait a whole lot longer. There's, there's bigger problems here. First, you gotta pour in the water. And the thing is, first thing in the morning, you never pour in enough water. I mean, if you pour in water to fill the entire thing, it's gonna break your arm because that holds a lot of water. I mean, that's enough to send to like a third world country and they'll be good for a year. So you have to put in just enough but it's never enough, so you turn on the machine and it tells you you have to go get more water because you don't have enough water in there to begin with, even though you only drink out of the thimble, so it totally defeats the purpose. So anyway, you go do that, and you have to wait a really, really long time for it to heat up. 
here's something you need to know. This thing right here, not actually heat activated. No, no, the heating mechanism is not the little uh, thing like we see here where you have the little the hot plate. It's actually internalized. So the water itself goes in cold, it's made really hot, and then, you know, the product is completely, you know, warm. Don't have to worry about anything. Uh, but the problem there is the K-Cup maker never really gets your cup as hot as it should be. Mr. Coffee is completely reliable. You turn it on, wait three minutes, get it out. It's going to be warm for a while. But every time I get a coffee out of the K-Cup maker, you know what happens? Like in two minutes, it's like frigid. It can't stay warm, and there's no way to keep it warm, so it completely defeats the purpose. You're losing a key functional mechanism from the Mr. Coffee generation to the jump to the k reg generation. And I mean, that's a huge step back. I mean, it's like, what if airbags were taken out of cars? Or what if, you know, they made a future car, like a new uh, a Tesla, but you couldn't go in reverse? I mean, what's the point? I mean, it's not really the modernization of the product. I don't see this as being the best evolutionary step for coffee makers. Just my opinion, but throwing it out there. And another thing about the K-Cup maker, this thing is loud. Mr. Coffee, you don't even know it's on. It just purrs a little, hisses, like once, you're done. You never hear it from it again. The K-Cup machine, on the other hand, it sounds like a Skrillex music video. Like, it warms up, it makes all these, like, this tumbling sounds. I mean, it sounds like Robocop is making your coffee when you use a K-Cup machine. It's just, it wakes people up. I mean, you think I'm joking, but it will. I mean, you can set this thing on silent for Mr. Coffee, like I do every morning. Get the little time selector, the delay brew, and you know, you just wake up. You don't even notice it. It's there, like magic, just waiting for you, telling you you're going to have a great, happy day. But with this thing, you know, you set the timer on, it's going to wake up the entire neighborhood. Alarm's going to go off. Cat's going to get scared. I mean, it's really not a consumer friendly product in any way, shape, or form. So that's another problem. So, Mr. Coffee, lightweight very quiet, it keeps your coffee warm, uh, it gives you everything you need, it keeps it warm for a long time because it has the hot plate, you have the timer. I mean, really, it's, it's better structurally in every way, but this is popular because the Illuminati or something, I don't know, I, I can't fathom why this machine, this mechanism has gained so much popularity over something which has been proven as an evidence-based industrial best practice. But you know what, Here, here's the big thing. Here's the big reason why Mr. Coffee is better than Mr. Kerag. I'm going to call him from here on the outward uh, Mr. K. Um, standard coffee, you go out and buy. You get your, your Folgers, you get your ground up stuff, you put in a package, you got your filters. Filters cost absolutely nothing. I've got like, what is this? I'm going to take a look here. This is a 700 uh, count filter basket that I got for like 98 cents. It's completely inexpensive. Uh, the coffee itself, even though you got like a giant 72 ounce container of uh, Colombian stuff, whatever, you can get it for like $8.99. So you can go out and, you know, get your coffee, get your filter, not even spend $10. Now, the K-Cups, these little mechanisms right here, I'll show you one, I'll get you in a minute, the little marinara packages, always don't put one in there. But these things are inordinately expensive. Like, they're, you're paying, I've seen some packages, they're like $18 for like a 12 pack, which sounds like a good deal until you realize, whoa, that's still like a very negligible amount compared to what you get out of a normal uh, canister of Folgers. So basically what you're doing is, not only can you not brew the higher uh, quantity that you want, uh, you're being asked to pay an absorbently higher price for the product you could get for literally half, sometimes as much as a third less in the standard coffee variation. In fact, you know what? I think I paid like 19 bucks for my Mr. Coffee unit. There are actually K-Cup packages out there, some of the higher grade, that actually cost more than Mr. Coffee in like 2006 USD. So I just can't fathom why this is happening. Now, like I said, it's not a terrible product. I mean, it's cool for what it is. If you're a casual coffee sipper, if you're the kind of guy that only likes a brew every now and then, no problem. You know, you can show it off to the neighbors, you know. If you're dating like a, a really uh, artsy, hippie chick, she's going to love it. But i got to go with Mr. Coffee because it's reliable, lightweight, compact, fast, smooth, convenient, 
completely gloriously simplistic, outdated, archaic, and mundane, and still the top of the line. So you know what? All the other people, you can enjoy your cake up. Enjoy your, your gigantic fax machine size thingy. Looking like the monster from Alien, all this stuff going on here. You know what? That's cool. Like I said, not that I don't like the end product, just that I think that the old school is way better than the new school, and really, that's all I have to say about that.